Welcome. Um, using blockchain to solve real life problems. Uh, and one of the real life problems you know, is carbon credits. So what is the problem with carbon credits? Well, it's actually the, the transparency and the accountability of carbon credits. The carbon credits, you know, in principle, I'm not disagreeing with the idea. It's an excellent idea, and it's hopefully going to be one of the tools that we can use to move forward. But, and this is a bit of a big but, the problem is actually the transparency. What do I mean by the problem being in transparency? Well, the problem's, if a business buys a carbon credit or are given carbon credits for offsetting, they hold the carbon credits. If they don't retire the carbon credits, they may resell them. And we well know that there's a secondary market within carbon credits. So one of the fundamental problems with carbon credits is if I'm a business and I get a thousand credits at 12 bucks a piece, and then they go up to 16 bucks a piece, I just made 4,000 quid profit. We should businesses should not be making profit from cleaning up their carbon mess. So the problem with carbon credits is actually where the money lands. And this is a really, really important point because we've seen, and don't get me wrong, I do believe and I support you know, the, the planting of trees, but this is a project in Pakistan, the borders of Pakistan and India. Yeah, this is a project where people in the West probably paid for their tree quite happily and got a nice little downloaded certificate. But there's no accountability. There's no checking that these forests are being maintained. There's no checking that the actual planting is actually happening. So the transparency of what a carbon credit is and the actual input, not the willingness of the person to purchase it, but the actual input, what it does, that's the thing that's under question. And as I said, the problem is the money is not getting to the projects, taking the carbon out of the atmosphere. And you'll notice I'll actually said out of the atmosphere rather than carbon offsetting, because I don't believe in offsetting. I, I the, the, And I'll, I'll give you a very short sequence that will hopefully explain why. Very, very simply, carbon dioxide is going up in our atmosphere. We all know that, proven fact. We know when we plant trees, that slows it down a little bit. But actually, when we take carbon out of the atmosphere, it actually reduces the overall amount of carbon in our atmosphere, which reduces the likelihood of hitting the 1.5 or the 2 point or exceeding the 1.5 or uh, 2 degree target. So how are we going to take carbon out of the atmosphere? Well, Number of ways. There's some great projects up in Iceland that are being geothermic, the um, powered. There's uh, seaweed. Seaweed. Th this is actually a picture of um, a seaweed called sargassum. It's actually a problem. It's a modern day problem. This is a what the picture you're looking at here is a beach in the Caribbean that is ankle deep in sargassum. Sargassum is a brilliant. It grows really quickly. It's, it, it absorbs you know, more so CO2 than trees can. And also, it actually improves the water quality by extracting harmful nutrients. And in order to be able to actually do something about our carbon footprint, we would need a farm, a seaweed farm, the size of Spain. And the only place we're going to build a, be able to build a seaweed farm the size of Spain is actually out in the ocean. So the oceans play a really, really big role in how we actually you know, want to actually take carbon out of the atmosphere. So what are we solving? We want to remove the damage we have already done. It's great planting a tree now, which will come to maturity within five years and actually possibly have a life existence of between 10 and 15 years. But that's happening in the future. If I plant a tree now, that's going to offset for something that I haven't yet done. And the problem is we need to take the carbon out of the atmosphere that we've actually put in there. And there are many creative ways of actually doing that. But one of the big challenges is we have to scale fast. And it's great that people talk about you know, recycling and they talk about all these small things that we do. And it's really important, these things that we do. You know, I, I remember even as a child, my father 
you know, I was brought up in Northern Scotland and my father actually, you know, separated the bottles, you know, when I was probably seven, eight years old. Yeah, I'm in my mid fifties now. 50 years ago, I started recycling and it hasn't helped. Part of the problem is the accountability and understanding what's causing the damage. An email, for example, one email that you send is four grams of carbon. A year's worth of emails are 136 kilograms of carbon, which is about 200 miles of driving. So by sending email, by doing your social, by watching your YouTube, you could be the equivalent of driving a petrol car for six months of the year. So the problem, one of the big problems is the speed that the speed we're actually uh, putting carbon into the atmosphere. So if you can imagine, you know, trying to sort out what a thousand to 10,000, a hundred thousand emails do in a day. And we walk out to a field and dig a little hole to plant a tree. We've got to get faster. We've got to move the pitch forward. So how are we solving the transparency and the scaling part? It's all very well to say, yeah, we need to do all this carbon uh, removal. And we need to say, you know, there's uh, mango plantations, there's, you know, soil sequestration, there's biochar. There's lots of brilliant ways of taking carbon out of the atmosphere. But how do we solve the transparency and the scale, the need to offset all those thousands of emails, all the active and the car driving and the flights and the manufacturing, everything that goes into the mix. We're going to create a digital token, providing accountability, transparency, and obviously simple access. So we are going to use the blockchain and that token will have the details of where that carbon was found. So that carbon might have been a mangrove plantation. It will have the details of who validated. Was it carbon gold that validated? It will have the details of who bought it. It will have the details of when it was retired. Um, yes, I can certainly share species of algae. Um, uh, so the beautiful thing about using Bitcoin or using not Bitcoin, using crypto for actually the recording and the accountability is it's always there. If I said to you today, Go out and tell me, show me what BP has done in the last year. Show me what Procter & Gamble has done. Point to that evidence for me. And we'd all go out and we'd find a really nice you know, report off their website that would have nice, some nice pictures of trees and leaves and stuff. But where is the evidence? Where, where, where can I point to it? And this is the problem. With blockchain, you could use a public browser, visit that part of the blockchain, and see that Procter & Gamble had bought a thousand tons and retired it. That BP had bought a million tons and retired it. So blockchain is the answer, but it's not a panacea for everything. You know, it, it, it's, it's purely, you know, it delivers our transparency and accountability and it locks in publicly forever and a day or for as long as the servers stay running. So in 10 years time, somebody could look back at today look at the chain and see exactly who had bought tokens for carbon credit and when they were retired. One token equals one ton of carbon credit. We want to keep this very simple. And if we put it this in a token um, platform, it means the transaction speed can be a lot, lot faster and we can service those corporates that need to be buying a million tons, two million tons a week. You know, we can't, you know, the amount of ground that you would need to solve our environmental problem by planting trees is breathtaking. It was well, actually non-existent. And actually the problem with planting trees is it's not so much the planting, we need to stop cutting them down. Cutting them down for reuse, fine. But the deforestation, that's the first thing that has to stop. And imagine blockchain in the future. Why do I say blockchain is the, is the answer? Well, blockchain, you know, in five years from now, will be ubiquitous. It will be how your house purchase is recorded. It will be it will be your Nike trainer. Your Nike trainer will have a, a little token number on it to validate that it's authentic. Your bottle of Chanel will have a number on the bottom to show that it's authentic. So blockchain, yes, you can make currencies out of it, but what you can do 
is lock in authenticity. You can put in facts and you can tie them down tightly so nobody can then change those facts. So God, I must explain how it works. So who are Just Carbon? Just Carbon, um, we're actually a foundation. We're a decentralized autonomous organization, which the short version of that is it means we don't own it. Nobody owns it. The people that own the tokens will own the DAO. We will then, well, actually, as we're doing at the moment, right, as we speak, we will actually pay the carbon sequesters and the project developers for their carbon. We will buy their carbon their carbon offset off of them. It has to be all valid, validated. We will use VCS and we'll use gold standard. Uh, so it will all be verified carbon. That, once we've bought a ton of carbon, we can create one just carbon reduction unit and a just carbon governance unit, which allows for the, the, the DAO to operate. Of course, we allow... The, if the carbon sequester wants to take tokens in exchange for their uh, tons of carbon, they can do that as well. Any mixture of cash and tokens, we're fine. But note the way the arrow goes towards the right place. We then issue our tokens. Our tokens will then go on to exchanges like Binance. We will have a proprietary exchange, which is on Chintai, but we will be on public exchanges from January. So you can just go on to the public exchange where you have a digital wallet and go, I'm going to buy 10 tons of carbon to offset my uh, my, my, uh, my living for this year. And roughly, uh, the UK is about 10 tons ahead. The US is about 19 tons ahead. Um, we have somebody from Ethiopia who I believe in Ethiopia, you're about 0 0.002 ton per head. So the West is making a hell of a mess of this world. So anyway, we publish the tokens. This also means that our carbon sequester, they can get even more money because uh, they can actually, hey, Chad, they can actually get, um, they can sell their tokens that we've given to them for, in exchange. So you can see the money is going in the right direction. The money is going for the carbon sequester. And then business, everybody from an individual that just wants to buy 10 tons to offset their year to somebody to you know, a Microsoft, a BP that needs to buy 2 million tons a week to keep up. Notice where the arrows are going. They're all going towards the project developer because of the project developer, if if our friend that has, oh, I think he has, I can't remember a thousand, how many thousand acres of, of mango um, groves, if he's making money out of it and we're giving him more money, he'll preserve more mango groves. He'll buy more mango groves. The, the, the Sargassan seaweed, you know, if we're paying them, but what we need to do is we need to fuel this market in order to meet up with a fast pace. Because remember the way we're, we're doing carbon. Remember four grams of carbon to send an email. There's a carbon footprint for what we're doing right at this second because we're actually using servers and we're using energy and we're creating heat. So whilst I applaud, and I live in the country, I love trees. Don't get me wrong, but planting a tree and waiting five years, we have not got the time. So it's a decentralized uh, or, uh, autonomous organization, which means that everybody that owns governance tokens will be able to vote on what the, uh, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, what the DAO does. At the moment, the DAO is seeing that any profits that it makes, which is a small percentage from a transaction of any coins, will actually be granted and gifted to project developers. This is not a get-rich-quick quick scheme. This is scale carbon removal to a level where the corporates can click two buttons and just do it. The next point for transparency is once we've created the token, we then burn it, or it's called retiring in normal carbon credit terms. But we take that digital token, that crypto token, and we make it non-tradable. So it still exists. It still it say, it says it's one ton of carbon. It still it says, it says it's one ton of carbon from a mango plantation. It says the date it was validated. It says who bought it and who retired it. So going back to my question earlier, if I said to you, 
how do, how can you prove that BP or Shell or Microsoft are doing it with this token? You use an open browser or a, a blockchain browser. You actually look up the element. Any, anybody in the world can do this public information. And you can see who paid for that ton of carbon, where it came from to assure the project people were paid for it, who bought it and who retired it for all of time. So blockchain will, will carry a fundamental, uh, it's a fundamental cornerstone of what we're doing. It allows the speed, the scale, the transparency, and the accountability. Because as I said, we can't keep up with the amount of carbon that we're dumping in the atmosphere. So we need a process that we really need to keep up with actually taking it out of the atmosphere. So how do you build a blockchain platform? Well, we didn't. We partnered. And th there's a really important point to this because blockchain is what we use. It's not what we are. It's what we use. And I think there's a lot of myths about blockchain. And as I've managed to upset everybody that loves trees, I'm going to just pile in and upset everybody that loves uh, blockchain now. Blockchain is great. Don't get me wrong. But it's a tool. It's a thing that will record our house purchases. It will record our medical exams. It will record you know, when our kids pass their driving tests. It will record the Nike trainers that I've just, the limited edition. It will record the serial number of my watch so it can never be stolen or always recovered. That's what blockchain does. You know, yes, we can talk about crypto and Bitcoin and we can talk about Elon Musk and Saturday Night Live and, you know, his mum pumping the price of Dogecoin before it crashed. Bitcoin is like HTML or is like mobile apps. It's just a platform. How we use the platform is the clever bit. And Chintai are very clever people. We have been working with them. Uh, we've got off the blocks. It's taken us about 120 days to get active with a blockchain, which, which is mind-bogglingly quick. You know, um, uh, will this record be shared with the attendees? I believe it will, yes. Um, so Chintai, great partner. I can't speak highly of them uh, enough, but they're helping us. They are our back end. They are our... our exchange because one thing at the foundation we didn't want to do was we didn't want to be holding people's money that's that's not our job we want to give the money to the sequester create the token push the token out on the market and let somebody purchase it you know we are enabling that and we're enabling it at very high volume um so what we've got to do is we've got to remove the damage we've already done i mean don't get me wrong you know Planting the trees, plant the trees if you want to plant the tree, because trees are very cool. But don't plant a tree under the illusion that you're actually offsetting your carbon. You're slowing something that's going to happen in between a three to five year window. So if you went to any of your clients, whatever businesses you're in, and they said, right, Abu, Chad, David, I need a solution. And you go, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it'll be, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll get onto it right now. And it'll start having an impact in about two years. And you go, no, hang on a minute. No, sorry. I, I need my office clean now. I need my car done now. I need the house extension now. And that's part of the problem of the carbon offsetting. We're waiting until it's too late. We have the technology now. We just need to make it scalable and transparent. The scale of the solution, you know, the speed the world moves at today, you know, we don't have time to walk around in welly boots and dig holes. We have got to actually put rocket fuel under the, the, the people that are using seaweed, the people that are using mango groves, biochar, bamboo growth, all the people that are doing wonderful things for carbon se sequestration and taking it out of the system. That's where we need to get the money to. So transparency and accountability is locked into the public blockchain. We will be live, uh, or our website will be live from next week. We have hopefully the remember, memorable name of justcarbon.com. Um, and we will be transacting in uh, January of next year. And I thought I'd end up end on a picture that that, because this is what we're saving. This is the D Valley in Scotland. This is where I brought up. I was brought up. I, I swam in that river. I fished in that river. The future can be bright, but it's blockchain, block, 
blockchain. Uh, and I want to make sure that I preserve this for my kids and my children's children. And yes, Robin, justcarbon.com does not work at the moment because we're live as from Thursday of next week. This was a, uh, I know Jason, I know the team. So he asked me to come along and tell the story slightly before we're live. But um, yeah, as from next week. So that's my 20 minute pitch. I hope that um, I haven't upset anybody too much that likes trees. And uh, I, I, I hope that that's giving you a bit of an insight into how blockchain can be used to solve real world problems. The problems, accountability, transparency and scale. And that's what we're using blockchain for. The purpose is to undo the damage that we've already done. So happy to take some questions here if anybody's got any questions. Otherwise, I will share a link in the chat where we can go to uh, a little room. Um, uh, thank you, Gilmar. Um, I will be sending you the details for uh, 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 how do the tokenomics of GRC look like? Uh, where where again uh, do you aim to launch the trade and purchase of the uh, Just Carbon Rejuvenous? Uh, okay, so the, the tokenomics of it, we use Chintai as our exchange. So we issue the tokens off a blockchain that's managed by Chintai for us. It's based on the EOS stack. We issue the tokens. The tokens are then put into a public pool so they can be purchased um, on any of the major trading platforms. Uh, the governance tokens will be awarded on the purchasing of the removal tokens. Um, ideally, there's two ways of doing it. People can either come to, excuse me, come to our platform or come to the Chintai platform and purchase them directly out of the pool where they've been issued in. Or we will be issuing them and pushing them out into places like Binance so they will be publicly available. One of the downsides of the tokenomics is, yes, it may end up getting treated a bit more like a currency, but we are backing this token. So each token, we will have paid for one ton of carbon. So the big difference between this and a cryptocurrency is this is actually a, a physical backed one. And I know there are some physical backs and physical underwritten you know, ETPs and ETFs, but you know, those, those are specialist financial vehicles. I think the, 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 the elegance of this is that anybody will be able to buy our tokens. You can come to our website if you don't even want to have a wallet. And just as from probably January, you can push a button. It'll say, here's your price for 10 tons and here's your digital certificate. Certificates we may be looking at, we're looking at NFTs maybe for certificates. But again, what we can't do is create a certificate that suddenly then ends up getting more value than the coin. So we know that we're playing in an area. So if, we, if I'm wearing the crypto hat, we're playing in an area that is volatile and uh, open to views, uh, news and rumors. But that's not what we're doing. We're not, we're not launching a cryptocurrency. We're launching a token. And the way we're going to solve our carbon pollution in the future is the countries that are suffering a lot of the countries in africa and india that are suffering they have to get money to help you know plant trees offset the carbon damage that's actually been done to their countries so there has to be a global way of paying people in carbon credits and the way we look at it it's this is completely transparent it's completely accountable being managed through a a a, a, a dao means that the company can never, you know, the DAO can never be owned by anybody. How can you show that it will not end up in the high emitters' hands uh, running the governance of the Just Project? Uh, how can, right, question from David. How can you assure that the governance tokens will not end up in the high emitters' hands um, and ruining the governance of the Just Carbon project? Excellent question. Where it's something that we're actually looking at at the moment. The, the, the challenge, obviously, or the benefit of a distributed uh, a, a DAO is everybody can then get in control. In theory, somebody could buy, in order for them to get control of 
enough CGUs to control the Dow, they would have to buy millions and millions of tons of carbon and offset it. So in order for them to try and disrupt us, they would actually have to play our game and actually invest in millions of tons of carbon. So it's something in theory we can't stop because once you set a, 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 a Dow free, you can't, you're not in control of it anymore. But it is something that we're kind of conscious of because we're conscious that, you know, uh, 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 you know, that the crypto world has a lot of cynicism around it. But as I said, I'm looking at the crypto world through a different set of eyes. I'm thinking, you know, in a few years, my medical records will be on a blockchain. I hope so, because I'll be more secure. I will hope my house purchase, my land registry, you know, all these things that, you know, where people lose details of where people are and what the detail is. If we lock it into the blockchain and, and make it publicly accessible, it's easy, you know. And yes, it will get to the point of where, you know, probably your trainers will have its own, you know, block blockchain uh, uh, account. And But if you think about um, uh, uh, blockchain for just fraud protection, you know, we see all these little... Um, sealed cellophanes and 3D stickers going on luxury products that you can pull off because they're connected to, on a string. Well, what, what what if that product actually had its own you know, digital serial number, its own token? Then when you buy a second-hand pair of trainers or a third-hand or a second-hand Gucci jacket or something, you can authenticate that it's actually real. And that, I think, is where blockchain is really about solving. So I would implore you, you know, don't be shy of blockchain. Look for partners. Chintai, as I said, you're an amazing partner to ourselves, have really helped us deliver, you know, uh, and it's helping us helping us deliver live as we speak. Um, yeah, to create a global token that we can fuel this carbon removal uh, 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 uh uh, activity because that's that's the only one and i wish i had more time to go into carbon removal and i could bore you for the next hour or hopefully inspire you for the next hour about why carbon removal is so fundamentally important to what we're doing the sea already takes about 317 million tons of carbon for us just by being there and what do we do we fill it full of plastic we destroy its seabed we kill its coral and we pull the fish out. The sea is there to help save us. So on a slight, I, I got on a slight rant there about um, uh, 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 the issue of the carbon removal because I do fundamentally believe that you know the level of noise around planting trees and you know my shampoo bottle's got twenty five percent of you know recycled plastic. Not good enough. That's not what I'm leaving my grandchildren. We can all decide what we leave our grandchildren, and that's not what I'm leaving mine. So hence, you know, it's a bit of a passion project, um, but it is also heavily financially backed. As I said, each physical token will be underwritten by a ton of carbon, and yeah, you know, we're buying it now. We're we're, we're spending the the thick end of your know, twenty five million dollars buying buying the the um, uh, carbon credits to put on the market to stimulate the market. And then we're going to give away loads of them to projects to stimulate them so they understand that they can actually make some money out of helping saving the planet. We've got to we've got to put the money. Do you remember my dollar sign? The dollar sign's going in the wrong pocket at the moment. You know, it you know, the polluter should be suffering and the project should be benefiting. And we need to lock that into an accountable and uh, accountable, traceable transaction that, that can be viewed today, tomorrow, in a hundred, in two hundred years' time. Somebody can look up what a token did, and for who and when. So I really thank you for your uh, 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 your attention today. I'm more than happy to. I will drop the Q and A link into because I think uh, I think I've got to get out of this room at some point because somebody else will be wanting to come in and uh, 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 have a chat. Um, there is a link in the chat, upstart.com forward slash uh, Q&A. I don't know what's on the other end of it either, but I'm going to go and press it any second now. 
So I'm going to head off to that room. I'll be available for uh, Q&A to talk about um, uh, carbon removal. If you want to have a go at me for having a go at the trees, happy to. Um, or if you just want to talk about blockchain or startups, please feel free. Thank you very much for your time on a Friday. Um, please look after the bit of the world that you're blessed to live in. And um, I will see you in the Q&A. Thank you again for your time.